Three years later, the 2019 NFL Draft class is most known for Kyler Murray and Nick Bosa going 1-2 and two, and, of course, all of the receivers that ensued. There were plenty of receivers taken over the first couple of rounds, and a lot of them have been pretty successful, such as, but not limited to, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, Debo Samuel, and the most recent player whose contract was extended, Deontay Johnson. And in today's video, we're going to discuss how these guys will perform in 2022, and since being extended, if we can expect any big differences. This is one of the most successful receiving draft classes over the past few years, and we will not get to everyone, just a fair warning. However, I'm not opposed to doing another video on this draft class, just an FYI, but with that preface out of the way, let's begin. And we are going to start today's video with Seahawks receiver DK Metcalf, who was extended not too long ago. In three years, DK has amassed over 3,100 yards receiving with a singular 1,000-yard season back in 2020. He went for over 900 in the other two seasons, however, 2020 was the highlight of DK's career thus far, in which we saw him truly put everything together when he went for an 83-catch, 1,303-yard, 10-touchdown season. One positive thing to say about DK, although there are plenty to be clear, is his touchdown numbers have improved every season since entering the league, and while that will certainly stop at some point, as he will not be a 30-year-old receiver going for 35 touchdowns in a season, it is nice to know he is a consistently scoring the football player, and he did not have an outlier of a year where he had 14 touchdowns and only has 20 total in three seasons. Despite the receiving numbers not being great, they're obviously not bad over his first three years, but he does have just the one 1,000-yard season. I like DK's potential in 2022, even with Drew Locke or Geno Smith as his quarterback. A big reason for this, as simple as this sounds, is DK is a huge target, and quarterbacks love throwing to friendly targets like DK, for example. If Drew Locke or Geno feel the pocket collapsing on them, which it most certainly will at some point in the 2022 season, that's not a shot at Seattle's line, as much of it is a general fact, they're going to have a mentality of, hey, screw it, DK's down there somewhere. Given he is nearly 6'4 and has a 40-inch vertical, those 50-50 balls are more like 75-25 for DK. And because of that, I don't think the numbers will fall off that much. I think he is an extremely talented receiver, and we are projecting him to have a 70-catch, 1,000-yard, 10-touchdown fourth season. From one former Ole Miss receiver, we go to another to discuss A.J. Brown, who was traded from the Titans to the Eagles this offseason. Brown is a 25-year-old receiver who has two 1,000-yard years in three seasons and is going from Ryan Tannehill to Jalen Hurts. The only reason he did not start his career off with three straight 1,000-yard seasons is because he missed four games last year, and I do think he would have cleared the 1,000-yard mark in 2021 had he played in those other games. I like AJ, however, I want to say one thing about him. There seems to be this idea that AJ is this top two or three or four receiver in the league when hearing people talk about Brown, and I'm not trying to say or imply that fans can't get excited about a player their favorite team traded for, then extended, but the AJ Brown hype train at times is a little ridiculous. There was a tweet over the past week that said, I don't think the Eagles have ever had a pass catcher like Brown and that this man is the definition of different, to which I quoted it and said this is the same franchise that had Terrell Owens at a point in time playing for them, who is third all-time in receiving touchdowns behind only Jerry Rice and Randy Moss. Anyways, I do think AJ will be critical for the Eagles' success in 2022 and will immensely help out the progression of quarterback Jalen Hurts, who threw for 16 touchdown passes in his second season. Again, I like AJ, but I don't think he is the savior of the Eagles franchise and that 2022 will be remembered as the AJ Brown show as some people seem to think. There are a lot of mouths to feed in Philly like Dallas Goddard, Devontae Smith, Miles Sanders, and Jalen Hurts in the run game himself, and we are projecting AJ to have a 75-catch, 1100-yard, 7-touchdown season this year. 
From the NFC to the AFC, we go to discuss the man fresh off the extension himself in Deontay Johnson. Out of any of the players in today's video, I do think Deontay is the toughest to project. He is coming off of a 100 catch season in which he had over 1100 yards and 8 touchdowns, but with Deontay, like with any other Steelers receiver over the past 15 seasons, there are a lot of weapons in this offense, aside from himself of course, and this year those cast of characters consist of players like Najee Harris, who had over 1600 total yards as a rookie, Pat Fryermuth, who had a very solid rookie season, Chase Claypool who has now put together back to back 800 yard seasons, and of course the highly touted rookie George Pickens. Deontay had an insane 169 targets in 2021, and quite frankly, I would be shocked if he has over 10 targets per game this year. There were 12 games last year where Deontay had double digit targets, and the chemistry him and Ben had simply will not be what him and Kenny Pickett have or him and Mitch have as that took a couple of years to build between Deontay and Ben. Could he and Kenny eventually have that sort of chemistry is something else on its own, but the year Deontay had last year is certainly nothing to scoff at. Sure, he may not be in the upper tier of receivers with the Devontae Adams and Cooper Cups of the world, but he had over 100 receptions and 1,100 yards last year, and I do expect that to slightly come down. And we are projecting Deontay to have a 90-catch, 1,000-yard, 6-touchdown season in 2022. Terry McLaurin is coming off of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons and has amassed over 3,000 yards in his career, due in large part to having a successful rookie season, well, in all of his years, but in 2019 when he went for over 900. He received a three-year extension this offseason, and instead of Taylor Heineke throwing him the football this year, it will be Carson Wentz. And think what you want about Wentz, because there are countless takes out there regarding him, but I do think this will be the best quarterback McLaurin has had thrown the football in his career, yet he has still been productive since being drafted back in 2019. He had four 100-yard games last year, and what I do think will benefit him is having another solid receiver within the offense in first-round pick Jahan Dotson. Not from a standpoint of he's going to take his targets, but from a standpoint of he will give defenses another player to focus on, and Terry will not necessarily be the only receiver to game plan against week in and week out. Defense's number one priority will still be to stop Terry first and foremost, but having another option for Carson Wentz to throw to is key, and will again, not only help Terry, but will help the Washington Commanders win football games. I do think Terry's numbers will resemble his year in 2020, when he had career highs in both receptions and yards, but I still don't think his full potential will be maximized with Wentz as his quarterback. I wish Terry and the Commanders the best, and we are projecting him to have an 85 catch, 1200 yard, 7 touchdown season. Staying in the NFC, we go cross-country to discuss Debo Samuel of the 49ers. Debo was the first receiver selected in the second round in 2019, and given the Patriots selected Nikhil Harry, who is now a member of the Chicago Bears with their first round pick, I'm sure they, along with many other teams, wish they could have that draft pick back. Anyways, Debo had shown flashes in 2019 and 2020, but 2021 was truly the first year we saw him put it all together, and he did so by averaging over 18 yards per catch and finishing the year with over 1,400 yards receiving. And with Debo, you of course have to mention the ground game and the threat he presents there as well, and he had 8 rushing touchdowns. I thought this was an interesting fact, but Debo has more career rushing touchdowns than he does receiving touchdowns. He is a very interesting and tough player to project because of the quarterback situation with the team moving on from Jimmy Garoppolo to Trey Lance and of course with the added ground game. So we will be projecting both in this video. And one thing I do want to say about Debo's rushing ability is I don't think the 49ers are going to use it as much this year as they did last. They signed him to a contract worth over $24 million per year and will want to reasonably, of course, 
protect their investment, and reasonably means they're not going to increase his carries and have him be a flex player like on Madden on steroids and have 120 carries and 120 receptions in the same season. Debo's 2022 year will look something like 75 catches for 1,200 yards and 5 touchdowns, along with 40 carries for 250 yards and another 4 touchdowns on the ground. This would be an insanely productive year in what very well could be another deep playoff run for the 49ers. Now, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel, as it would mean a lot, as well as help tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please join the Discord, the link is in the bio, and until next time, please be safe, and have a great day. Love you guys.